Hey, what's going down, everybody? This is your boy, Jay Mason, inside the Time Machine on WUAG 103.0 FM. Playing the best in new and old school hip-hop, R&B, and everything else in between. With me on the phone right now, I have a legend in the world of radio, Mr. Walt Baby Love, host of the syndicated radio shows, The Countdown, and Gospel Tracks. Mr. Walt Baby Love, welcome to the Time Machine. Thank you, Jarrell. It's a pleasure to be here with you, man. Thank you. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to do this interview with me. Well, the fact that you got in touch with us, I was just really honored and humbled by that so i said obviously god has led you in this direction so i said hey let me speak to the young man all right i definitely appreciate that now let's start it off like was radio something you always wanted to do or did you happen to stumble upon it? well it's kind of a two-way street sort of meaning when i was a kid growing up in creighton pennsylvania which was way out in the, in the appalachia and the allegheny mountains in western pennsylvania i used to listen to the radio a lot as a kid and we would get wlac from Gallatin, Tennessee was like the big radio station that we would listen to because it played R&B music because at that time in the Pittsburgh area we only had one radio station and it was a daytimer. So the point is I got into hearing all this music, loved the radio personalities, but I never really thought about being in radio. Then later I stumbled into radio only because of one of my high school friends who lived in a neighboring community. He was interested in radio and his father was a part-time radio personality in Pittsburgh. So every blue moon, his dad would take us to their event, because back in the day, they would do live dances and stuff like that. And so I kept seeing this, and I kept saying, wow, that seems so exciting. But I really want to be a teacher. I want to be a social worker. I want to work with people and help people. And then later, while in the military, uh, you told me you have my book, so you know a little bit about me. Uh, while I was in the military, one of my commanding officers said to me that they were impressed with my articulation and my speech, and he said, you know, he said, whether you stay in the military or you get out, you should get into radio and television. You should do news because you have such a beautiful voice, but you speak so well. So I became interested in radio, tried to get into Armed Forces Radio and Television Network, but I was refused when I asked for a transfer, meaning I put it in writing and everything. And uh, they said I couldn't move because I had a critical MOS, and my MOS was my military occupational skill, which was a 1-1-B, which is a light weapons infantryman. But I was also a paratrooper, as you know, in the 82nd Airborne Division. So they needed people in combat in Vietnam, so they would not allow me to get into radio and television, if that answers the question. Okay, and for those of you that haven't read the book, you were over at Pope Air Force Base out near Fayetteville, correct? Uh, I was in uh, the 82nd Airborne Division, but as you know, Fort Bragg connects Fort Bragg. with Pope Air Force, but I was in the Army. Okay, so you're right around the whole Fayetteville area, right? Oh, the whole Fayetteville area, because the people at Pope Airfield, they're the ones who pick us up, fly us, drop us into combat, and so we had to work with the people in the Air Force all the time, but I was in the Airborne. I was in the 1st to 505th Airborne Infantry. Okay, now Air what? Mm, now were you like nervous, like going up in the planes and jumping out and knowing like, okay, it's a long way down? Actually, uh, I never was, Jarrell, only because as a kid, uh, my great-grandparents had a farm, as you know. And uh, in the barn, I used to jump out of the second story of the barn into the hay and sometimes on the ground to teach myself how to land on the ground because I always said that I wanted to go in the military and if I did, I wanted to be a paratrooper. So consequently, my very first jump was the very first time I had ever been in a plane in my life being a country boy. And uh, for me, it was a challenge because we were trained very well. Uh, I wanted to fight for my country. Uh, I saw my fellow uh, men in the military uh, there in the 82nd who had, say, the courage as well as the expertise of jumping out of planes, getting on the ground and taking the fight to the enemy. And I said, guess what, Lord? Encourage me. Give me what I need so that I can represent you well, my country well, and my family well. Mm -hmm. And that you did. And you had some early practice in those country days, jumping off that barn and into the hay. So, yeah. hey, <laughs> never, never too late to start. Now, so, tell me about... Okay, tell me about your beginning in radio, like where did you start out first and then your career over at WXLO 99X, New York, New York? Yeah, big time. Uh, what happened first for me was when I returned from Southeast, Air, uh, Southeast Asia after my second tour in the military, uh, what happened was I was assigned to Gannon University as an ROTC instructor working in escape and evasion, uh, teaching that to young 
men in the ROTC department who were about to become second lieutenants. Long story short, that's where the officer that I was working for kept saying to me, you ought to get into radio and television. And so anyway, I started working at a small radio station there in town called WWYN in Erie, Pennsylvania, which was a beautiful music station, and we played music by people by the name of Andre Castellan in the orchestra and choir, Edie Gourmet, Les Elgarde in the orchestra, people like that. So we never played R&B music or anything of that nature. So I had a strange beginning, and then I worked at a place called WWGO there in Erie at the same time. So on Saturdays and Sundays, I would be on the top 40 rock and roll radio station playing the Moody Blues and the Rolling Stones and people like that. And then Monday through Friday, I was on the beautiful music station playing Edie Gourmet. So what happened to me was I decided, I talked to my mother about it. She was alive then. And uh, I said, Mama, I'm thinking of getting out of the military after seven years. I'm not sure what to do. So she said, well, baby, you pray about it. And she said, and if you decide to do it, she said, you go ahead and do that because me and Mr. Joe will support you. Mr. Joe was my stepfather, uh, Joseph Barnes. And so she said, so if you get out of the military, don't worry about it. Just give it a try. And at the worst, she said, and if it doesn't go well, you come on home. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Yes, it um, is. God backs you up with your parents. So my mother encouraged me to give it a shot. Uh, long story short, I, asked, I answered a couple of ads in Broadcasting Magazine. And these people hired me sight unseen to work in Houston, Texas. But Houston at that time was not the large city it has become now. And I went to Houston, Texas, and I worked for an R&B radio station there for uh, three years. Then I worked at another radio station in Houston for two years. And then these people found me, uh, RKO General, and I became their very first African-American talent that they hired to go to work in uh, Windsor, Canada, the place called CKLW. The reason I'm telling you all this is because there was a very famous man by the name of Bill Drake who was still alive, and he was considered sort of the godfather of Top 40 radio. Well, he controlled all these radio stations in major cities, and that's how I ended up being transferred from their radio station in Windsor, Canada, to New York City, to WXLO 99X, which was the premier FM radio station in New York City. That was the only FM that gave any competition to then WABC and WNBC. And as you know, five years later, uh, XLO didn't want to give me a bunch of money, and NBC hired me away, and uh, that's where I found out about seven-figure salaries. <laughs> yeah, because I was listening to the old AirChecks, the 99X on AirChecks.com, and listening to some of your stuff, and I'm like, wow. But like, how was it being like one of the few black personalities at a top 40 station? 